Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, we are going to be comparing the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 to the AMD Radeon RX 580 to see which one of these GPUs is the best for modern emulation. First up, we're going to be taking a look at RPCS3 and one of its most popular titles, Persona 5. The main reason I picked these two GPUs, the RX 580 and the GTX 1060, is because for one, they are both very similarly specced and get very similar performance in AAA titles and regular gaming, and because two these two GPUs are very similarly priced with the GTX 1060 6GB variant that I'm using here, usually coming out about $20 to $25 more expensive. Using these two GPUs, we also get another interesting comparison using RPCS3, mostly due to the fact that this PlayStation 3 emulator already has access to the Vulkan API, an API that a lot of people say that the RX 580 is absolutely dominant while using. However, in Persona 5, at least using this Vulkan API and using the most optimal settings for both GPUs, you can very clearly see that the NVIDIA GTX 1060 is getting much, much better performance in practically all gameplay situations. These same kind of performance differences happen at higher resolutions in RPCS3, however I do want to note that on AMD GPUs, due to a driver related issue on RPCS3 currently, if you run this game and many other games at higher resolutions than the base resolution, due to said driver issue you are going to get graphical artifacting in a diagonal line across your screen. For this reason and for benchmark parity, I have run both of these benchmarks at the native resolution of 720p, but as I've already said, if you run these games at higher resolutions, you're going to see a very similar performance differences, with the GTX 1060 coming out on top in pretty much every single scenario. Now that Persona 5 is out of the way, let's move on to yet another very popular game on this emulator. Let's take a look at Demon's Souls. This title has been very playable on RPCS3 for a very long time, and as you can very clearly see, I was able to attain a 30 frames per second locked using both of these GPUs when running this game at 3840 by 2160 or 4K resolution. Even in much more demanding areas outside of this starting area, this game basically didn't skip a beat maintaining this 30 frames per second lock at 4K resolution. However, on the AMD RX 580, the issue with weird graphical artifacting at lower resolutions than 4K resolution is still there, it's just far, far less apparent when running at this higher resolution, almost to the point where it's completely imperceivable. However, due to these driver related bugs and the generally better performance on the Nvidia card, for RPCS3 at least, I would highly advise that if you're looking for a GPU between the price points of around $170 to $200 that you go for the Nvidia GTX 1060. Let's now swiftly move along to some Nintendo Switch emulation where we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey and Pokemon Let's Go. First up, let's take a look at the AMD RX 580 and its performance and usability in Pokemon Let's Go on Yuzu. As you can very clearly see on screen, it has several graphical issues, however its performance is fairly decent. The most egregious bug and the worst one by far in Pokemon Let's Go and many other games on this Switch emulator is the fact that, as you can very clearly see in all of these menus, none of the fonts for Pokemon Let's Go and many other titles on this emulator are being correctly rendered. Unfortunately, as with the bugs we were seeing in RPCS3, this issue is also related to the AMD Windows driver. Now, all hope isn't lost, as for AMD GPU users, if you want to use a Yuzu emulator, you can get fairly significantly better performance and rendered fonts if you use the Mesa driver on Linux, but in relation to the Windows operating system, the platform that most people are going to be using, this is pretty much the best case scenario, at least at this point in time using the RX 580 with Yuzu emulator. Jumping across to the same game using the GTX 1060, you can see that not only are we getting better performance, but when I jump into my menus, you can also see that using this Nvidia GPU, any and all of these menu fonts are being correctly rendered, and in a similar circumstance, when we jump into any random battle, you can also see that all of the fonts are being correctly and properly rendered here. 
Okay, on to our next game for testing on Yuzu Emulator, let's take a look at Super Mario Odyssey. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you, due to an AMD driver depth stencil issue, this is pretty much the best performance you're going to get out of Super Mario Odyssey using an RX 580 when paired with an i7 8700K. In all of my testing for this video in Super Mario Odyssey, the most I ever saw was around 11 or 12 frames per second, and even in that circumstance, I was in a very, very non-demanding area on the outskirts of Sand Kingdom. There are also several instances of the graphics just completely breaking, bugging out and having vertex explosion, and on top of this, as you're going to see in this speech bubble box in a few seconds, as with in Pokemon Let's Go, none of the fonts are correctly rendered in Super Mario Odyssey, as is also made very obvious by the missing coin counter in the top left hand corner. Moving back to the Nvidia GTX 1060, it's a fairly different experience. All of the fonts are correctly rendered in both gameplay, the menus and any of these speech bubbles, we have zero vertex explosion in any of these areas of the game, and performance wise the game runs at between around 40 and 60 frames per second when not recording a gameplay. Obviously in this and pretty much any emulator your performance is still going to be mostly dictated by the power of your CPU, but having seen just how much the AMD RX 580 and indeed any AMD GPU is going to hold back your performance, if you're looking for a GPU specifically for this emulator, I can highly recommend buying an Nvidia GTX 1060. For anybody who is also not aware of it, there is in fact a Vulkan API backend being written for Yuzu emulator at this very moment, so obviously when that gets released to us, I'm going to be redoing all of these tests in order to reevaluate whether you should be using an AMD or an Nvidia GPU for this emulator. Let's now move on to our next emulator, CMU, an emulator for the Nintendo Wii U. So in relation to AMD versus Nvidia on this Wii U emulator, there are both some good, some bad, and then some really bad points in relation to performance and gameplay. You are currently watching Mario Kart 8 being run at 4K resolution at basically a perfectly locked 60 or 59 frames per second with the utilization of the online mode synchronization graphics pack. This is just one example of games running very, very well on CMU emulator when using a AMD GPUs, in this case specifically the AMD RX 580. Again, jumping across to the GTX 1060, you're going to see pretty much the exact same situation where at 4K resolution we are going to be locked at 59 frames per second with practically identical performance between the GTX 1060 and the RX 580. For a multitude of games on a CMU emulator, this is going to be the exact same circumstance. However, the issues are going to start arising when we take a look at the most popular game on this emulator by far, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the wild. Even in its best case scenario, the AMD RX 580 and pretty much any AMD GPU is going to be absolutely destroyed by pretty much any Nvidia one, in this circumstance the GTX 1060. As is very apparent by the on-screen benchmark and performance numbers, while the AMD GPU does use less system RAM, when utilizing the FPS++ graphics pack you can very clearly see that the GTX 1060 is absolutely killing it for performance, in this circumstance being well over double its frame rate and at times in gameplay in certain areas of the world you're going to see 3 or 4 times the performance on the Nvidia GPU over the AMD one. Please also bear in mind the fact that both of these GPUs are being paired with an 8700K clocked at 4.7 GHz, and while the RX 580 is able to maintain close to 30 frames per second on this very high-end CPU, you should definitely expect much lower performance levels on a lower-end one. Obviously the same thing is going to ring true for the GTX 1060, but considering how much of a performance overhead this GPU has over the AMD one, it is not going to be anywhere near as much of a factor for performance. Again, as with Yuzu Emulator, there is currently a Vulkan API backend being written for CMU Emulator, so hopefully once we get our hands on with that we're going to see even better performance for all of you AMD users out there. 
And again, as with Yuzu Emulator, once this Vulkan API backend gets released, I will be redoing all of this testing in order to reevaluate which GPU you should be using for the best possible performance on any and all of these emulators. For now though, the performance results are pretty clear. If you're looking for the best possible performance, you should 100% be looking at buying an Nvidia GPU. They not only offer better performance by far in all of my testing, but they also offer far less visual and graphical glitches in any of the games that I've tested on any and all of these emulators. Obviously, everything I've covered in this video has been based around the Windows 10 operating system, but in future, I'm also going to be doing similar comparisons between the Linux and Windows operating systems, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for those. Hopefully, everything we've looked at in this video is going to help you in your decision as to which graphics card you want to buy. For now, that's going to be it for this video. Once again, guys, cheers for checking it out. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.